but having consist a funnel behind that where you have consistency on building a relationship kind of online um, that really entails systems because you can't possibly start responding and having conversations with everyone that connects with you. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hey, real quick before we get started, first of all, I wanted to thank everybody for joining us on the show and for listening uh, to all my loyal listeners. I really appreciate you, uh, you know, continuing to listen and support the show. If you can go on to iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever you listen and subscribe to the show, that would be fantastic. Spread the word too. I'd love to, you know, have this reach more and more people. So if you could share it on social media or, or, or and just talk about it to other people, that would be fantastic. And the last thing is if you can go on to iTunes and give us a rating review, uh, hopefully five stars, that would be great as well. It just helps us spread the word more and it helps us get continue to get uh, really good guests on the show. We've had some fantastic guests and I just want to be able to continue to bring fantastic value to you. Go on to our Facebook page too, Pillars of Wealth Facebook page. And I'd like to hear from, from you as a listener of you know, what you're doing in business, what you've got going on, what you are maybe struggling with or uh, being successful with, and then what we can do on the show to help push you to that next level. Maybe uh, questions we can ask our guests, maybe guests that we can get on the show to talk about certain topics, certain things that are really neat, you're needing uh, some, some extra support with. So provide for us some feedback on Facebook, um, and you can also share this out on, on social media. That would be fantastic as well. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being a, uh, being a either new listener or a loyal listener. I definitely appreciate it. And we will get started with the show. Welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexammer. With me today is Stephanie Wonkel. Stephanie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you being on the show. A little bit about uh, Stephanie is um, Stephanie's story is just about how the average everyday single mom can crush her corporate job at the same time turn a real estate side hustle into a growing family business. She works a full time uh, software production development uh, and at the same time is actively growing and managing a portfolio of single family homes and now recently. I started getting into multifamily. Stephanie started a real estate investing syndication business where she connects investors with solid sponsors in the multifamily self-storage and mobile home park niches. So Stephanie, with that, can you tell our listeners a little bit more about you know your background, how you got your start, and now what your focus is today? Sure, absolutely. Uh, so like many of us in this space, I started with single family homes uh, about 10 years ago in 2008. Um, I had always kind of believed in the wealth building potential of real estate investing and kind of just jumped in, not with a ton of knowledge. Uh, in 2008, I bought uh, a single family home. And um, then about six months later, I had another opportunity to, uh, because at the time in 2008, there were a lot of opportunities to buy. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had an opportunity to jump in and get a couple more. So I had um, these three single family home rentals that I was managing myself and managing tenants. And I literally um, had had no experience. I had no experience. I was recently uh, divorced. So a single mom of two young children. Um, and like you mentioned, working full time. And so I just kind of figured it out along the way. And I held on to those properties and continued managing them. And then the market kind of churned and I realized that I could get out of those properties and get into things that were easier to manage. Um, those particular properties were what people might consider kind of CD properties. So uh, meaning that they were in 
uh, less desirable neighborhoods with less desirable tenants. So I did a lot of turnover. There was a lot, uh, a lot entailed in managing those properties. So when the market turned, I exchanged those for some easier to manage um, properties. At the same time, the market where I'm at in Denver um, started to go up and up and up. And the opportunity to scale and cash flow became less and less and less as that happened. Uh, so a couple years ago, uh, I decided that I really wanted to uh, grow bigger. I was seeing passive income from those rental properties. I was seeing appreciation and it was really validating uh, my premise that there's a lot of opportunity with wealth building and real estate. So I started to kind of do some math around how can I scale how many doors do I need, um, that kind of scenario, and realizing that my market uh, wasn't gonna make that happen. So I started investing in single family and small multifamily outside of my market, uh, which entailed getting teams set up, first of all, determining the markets and then setting up teams and all of the things that are involved uh, with setting up single family homes out of state. Um, so I, I continued on that and realized that, boy, that I'm going to have to have a lot of single family homes to, you know, get to where I want to get. And obviously you have to find the home, you have to go through the whole lending process with the home, all of the things that take a lot of time to get that going. I decided that that was going to be uh, really difficult. So I started looking into how can I go bigger, faster, and that's when I started learning about investing in apartments and multifamily. And the barrier to entry in from single family to multifamily can be daunting because they're not necessarily transferable skills. Uh, the lending isn't the same at all and uh, lenders don't really care if you did single family. So getting a deal on a multifamily was gonna take a lot of relationship building. And so as I started to learn about getting into multifamily, I also started to hear about multifamily syndication. And that I thought would be a great step to start getting involved, start learning, um, kind of start getting all the knowledge that I needed to do my own deal. So, so last August, actually last February, I kind of fell upon um, Joe Fairless's Best Ever Conference, which was here in Denver. And at, that was my first introduction to multifamily and syndication. Uh, as a single family investor, I went to that and was overwhelmed by wow okay this is a whole new world these are you know it's different terminology it's different landscape and that kind of kicked off my desire to jump into syndication which is the area of my business that i'm growing today um that's a lot <laughs> <laughs> sorry no that's perfect that's exactly what i wanted so so out of out of state investing in single families, uh, you, I hear a lot of people wanting to do that. Uh, they want to, you know, opportunity maybe like you're in Denver. Uh, obviously, Denver is just extremely, uh, it got extremely hot. Prices went way up. So difficult to find cash flowing properties. And a lot of markets did that. And there's some markets out of state from from people or out of area, maybe even in their state, but that still can have some cash flow. Did you did you find it to be profitable when you went out of state? Were you making money on those on those properties as far as cash flow standpoint, or was it uh, really difficult to do that? Um, definitely, I have been able to cash flow um, going out of state, but now hindsight, when I look at the cash flow relative to effort um, for those out-of-state single-family homes. I And now knowing what I know about apartments, multifamily, and syndication, um, it would have been much better to have put all of that effort towards that if I had known. Um, one of my, one of my, um, one of my obstacles was that 
to move my cap my capital out of Denver into other markets, I needed to 1031 exchange them. And so there's some limitations on that. I can't, for example, 1031 uh, a gain in a single family into a passive uh, multifamily apartment syndication. So I was at the time kind of forced to if I wanted to get cash flow to kind of move that that way, but um, I am able to cash flow. But again, I think um, if you have the choice, I would. If I if I were to do it over again and knew what I knew now, I would jump into multifamily. Yeah. Um, same same here. <laughs> yeah, if you um, only knew. Yeah, yeah, right. If you only knew, you would have went went there a lot quicker. Uh, do you still have single families that, I do. You're, that you're I do. eventually planning on selling? Yeah, I eventually selling maybe. I mean, I have them and mm-hmm. um, I'm just kind of sitting on that for now and working, working my other business. I don't know what I'll end up doing with those. Sure. They sure. cash flow. So that's great. I get checks. Um, so that's still, still nice. Have you thought- because they're out of state, I have property managers. Like I'm forced not to manage them. So yeah. it's really nice not to do that aspect. Yeah, it does force you to uh, hire other people and, and allows right. you to get that, that trust factor kind of, you have to trust them because you can't be managing it. That was one thing nice about the out of state for me is that I was, uh, I'm kind of a hands-on person and so when you go out of state, you have to be, you're forced to be a hands-off person. It forces you to learn how to manage a little bit differently. Yeah. It's hard when they're in state because I mean, you don't want to pay that 10% to have someone (laughs) do something that takes really like 5%, but that 5% can be very taxing and difficult. Um, So it's kind of a, I just couldn't, I couldn't get myself to do that when they were in state. And like you mentioned, when you're out of state, you're just forced to do that. Yeah. So with the syndication, then tell me a little bit about that. What's your focus? Uh, what, do you, what are you looking for in that business? So right now, uh, my main, I work with a syndication team and we work with um, the best sponsors in the business in helping raise capital um, to, to close big multifamily deals. And right now my focus on the general partner side is around, um, raising capital, adding value, doing due diligence and, and those kinds of things. What I hope to do or plan to do in the future is to, um, sponsor, you know, find some deals, sponsor some of my own deals and kind of work towards that. Uh, but I really enjoy the kind of investor relations part of raising capital and helping educate people who have no idea, like I did it, right? Who have no idea that this is a thing and it's out there and you can have the benefit of investing in real estate passively without, without having tenants and all of those things. So I really enjoy that part. So I want to keep on doing that and then kind of see it what expanding from there goes. So how are you finding, uh, you know, you're, you're raising money. Uh, so you need to find high net worth people. How are you finding those people cultivating those relationships? What are maybe a few keys that uh, you think you do well? So, so it starts with um, kind of looking at your current network and who the people are in your world. Um, I have been in software development for 20 years. So I have, and I've lived in Colorado my whole life. So I have a, I know a lot of people. And um, the first kind of thing is to communicate, get to those people and tell them what you're doing. Um, At first that was that was a little challenging because folks are like, well, I don't understand. You're, you're now in real estate and you're a software person, you know, so you have to kind of bridge the, the knowledge of what they know you for and expand it. Those who are really close to me, 
obviously know all of my, basically my landlord horror stories of the last 10 years. So they know that real estate is, is something that I'm passionate about. Um, but they're, you know, moving into this new kind of venture. So I've really been, um, kind of building up here's how I, here's how I'm an expert in this area um, to people that see me as an expert in another area. So um, first of all, kind of getting out there with my current network, um, telling them what I do and communicating about opportunities, talking to a lot of people, um, building those relationships that maybe I haven't talked to in a while. And then it's um, expanding beyond that to kind of getting out in the community, getting out in, just getting out in, out there that I am, a, you know, that I'm in investing in multifamily real estate and what the benefits are and, and like just getting your, getting yourself to be known so that people can, you can build a res- relationship with people and they trust you and eventually want to invest with you. Yeah, that's great. Um, for for those who maybe don't have the the that big network, is there anything that they can do to start kind of building relationships? Um, you know, for instance, I when I first started this business, I had you know my network was very limited. I didn't know anybody that was wealthy uh, whatsoever. What what do you what would you say to though that type of person? I think that um, educating, educating yourself and putting yourself with people that are at that level that you want to be at is helpful. Um, like you've done, you've started a platform, uh, like an educational platform. So you are out there seen as an expert in the area. So people that you don't know start to see that and start to hear you, start to hear your connections with other um, big players in the space. And then they start, you start to have credibility. I think for someone that doesn't have the network, it is, you know, building a network and building credibility with the network and kind of positioning yourself as that expert. And so you would need to go do that in places where um, investors are. So maybe you do talks, um, you know, where it would have, have dinners, whatever you can do to position yourself as an expert and get yourself amongst the people that you, you know, would hope to be your investors at some point. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Pick, pick a, you know, pick a, certain thing you're going to focus on, I would say too, is, you know, like you said, if you're going to do talks or maybe you're going to do dinners or whatever, and who's your target audience and kind of focus on that, make that your kind of bread and butter. Um, it's, I think that's going to help as well. Cause that same, if you're, if you're talking mainly to, let's call it doctors, well, those doctors are going to start to talk to other doctors and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's going to just snowball, but if you're just talking to everybody, uh, that was a little harder to snowball. Yeah, exactly. Hey, we're going to take a quick break, and I want to mention a few things. First of all, I've been doing some coaching, and I want to continue to kind of expand that slowly and and take on a few clients. And and up until recently, I didn't really believe uh, in coaching and and uh, you know taking courses and stuff like that. But I recently, or I shouldn't say recently, it's been, it's been a, a few years now, hired a, a coach and saw a, immediate results and have been very happy with it and decided, you know, as my teaching background, I wanted to do some coaching myself and help other people get the results that I was able to achieve. And so if you're at that point where you think that's the spot for you, or maybe you just want to explore if it's right for you, uh, you know, reach out to me. I'd have a free discovery call with you. We want to make sure that it is the right step for you to take. There might be other things that you can do to get success uh, and coaching might not be it, but let's have that discovery call to find out if that is uh, the step that you need to take. So it can really make a major impact in your business and get you to that next level. 
the other thing is John Styles. He's on this show every single week uh, with me on the Hump Day Hustle. And John Styles is a real estate agent in, in Minnesota, and he will help you find a good, good investment property. John is very knowledgeable and can help you find an investment property. It can also help you sell your investment property. So reach out to John Styles with Bridge Realty and uh, connect with him. He'll also, you know, consult with you and, uh, and make sure you guys are the right fit. So uh, give him a call if you're in Minnesota, reach out to him. Uh, he'd love to help as well. Back to the show. So um, what's a, what's a, mistake that you've made um, and how have you learned from it? How have you changed uh, through that mistake? I think one of my mistakes you kind of just hit on, which is um, focusing. Uh, when you when you get into the space and there's and it's something new and you're just learning and soaking in a lot of information, you feel like there's so many things you have to do you and so many things you want to do and you're kind of going in all different directions and um, like you mentioned that that limits your ability to to really uh, get momentum because you're not focused on one thing so I think that's one one area that challenges me that I that I continue to work on the other area is regardless um, what aspect of real estate or any kind of entrepreneurial business you're doing, um, creating systems for that is is imperative. And I have kind of, my mistake has been to kind of jump in, do a lot of things, and then not necessarily have the systems to back that up. And an example of that, my a really simple example is. Um, you know, in any business, you're trying to grow your email distribution list and your funnel, and you do things to market yourself, whether it be through social media or your podcast or whatnot, and you're driving people to um, to yourself or your website to to hopefully sign up and be a part of your email distribution list. Um, but having consist a funnel behind that where you have consistency on building a relationship kind of online, um, that really entails systems because you can't possibly start responding and having conversations with everyone that connects with you. So that just a simple example of having systems in place is something that I'm really working to work on as well. Yeah, very good. Um, I forgot to ask you earlier, are you still full-time uh, in your job or are you doing the real estate full-time? No, I am still full time. Um, you know, I really love my job. I get paid really well. Um, I have two kids uh, that are in college right now, um, and so the insurance aspect is important to me. So I'm I'm still doing it. I fully anticipate transitioning um, at some point, but you know, things, things are going really well with that as well. So I'm right now I'm struggling both, which is also a challenge as you can imagine. Well, that's, that leads to my next question is, is how are you doing that? Because most people, you know, that work in that nine to five or whatever you work, probably even more than that. Um, they just, they struggle to do anything else. They want to have their life and they struggle to, you know, add that second layer of what you're doing is this real estate investing, which is, is really impressive that you're able to do both. So how are you juggling both and still staying, staying sane at the end of the day? So first of all, I'm really passionate about the real estate investing. It's not it's kind of fun. It's like fun and a hobby to me. So that's one aspect. Like I, when at the end of my work day, I'm excited to jump in and do what I need to do for my business as opposed to, you know, feeling dread or tired about it. So, so that's super helpful. Um, also, I really have had to, um, really prioritize my prioritize things and basically sacrifice things. So I get up at five, 
I do a couple hours of work and planning of what I want to get done and my priorities for my business, you know, before I go to my work day. And then I'm also really fortunate in that, um, you know, my children are pretty grown. My one left as a senior on their own. So after work, I have a lot of flexibility um, to work on my business where I, you know, a lot of people with young children, that's, that's far more difficult to manage. Um, so I think the two things are that I just love doing it. So I make it a priority. The second being prioritizing really diligently everything. So I don't watch a lot of TV. I don't do a lot of those other things that might take away time from doing my business. So, so in reality, it's, it's two things. It's cut out the, the BS, the, the other stuff that yeah. doesn't add value and, and prioritize, which really boils down to prioritizing. I mean, getting rid of all the junk and making that important. And I think the other thing is is finding something you love. You, you're you're having fun doing it. It's not a job for you. It's not like you're going, uh, leaving your your first job and going to a, a second job and clocking in. You're doing something that you enjoy. You actually, it feels like it's it feels like it's a hobby. It kind of feels like it's a treat to to do it. Yeah, and I have I have a big vision and a big why, and part of it is that. Uh, I establish this kind of real estate investment family business. And um, I envision that, you know, my kids and their kids and their family were all together growing a business. And my 20 year old um, jumped in this year and he's actually starting um, flipping and wholesaling. And so um, you know, I'm supporting him and helping him kind of work through that, which takes which uh, takes time away from other stuff I would be doing. But when I think about my big why and my big vision, uh, it's really easy to to prioritize. Okay, this is what I've what I've been doing all of this for, uh, and it's really so fun to be you know people you love to be as passionate as something as you are uh so it's very rewarding in that aspect yeah well that's and that's cool it's it, see your kids uh get into kind of what you're I into is is really cool especially because um you know that they're as they get older obviously they get a little farther away from the nest and <laughs> yeah yeah having them do something that you know, that you love doing that you can help out with is is really cool so, well that they can they have choices right so yeah. as we all learned you do, you do great in school you go to college and you get a corporate degree and, and or excuse me and then you get a corporate job and that's what you do yeah. and i did that and i want I have always had an entrepreneurial heart and I I want my kids to see that there are options and you don't have to you know go down the same path as everybody else yep yep yeah and most of us that like didn't even realize there were like that was even an option because you're yeah you know you're in high school I can still remember you're in high school and, and you're taking these assessments to figure out what your job is going to be yes you're not yeah. taking it to figure out what kind of business you can run or you know anything like that it, it just like as an 18 year old or 17 year old um I don't think there was ever even a thought in my mind that I could be a real estate investor and right. I could be buying multifamily properties and have a business like that. It just wasn't like even a thought. And so some of the stuff that's out there, we don't even realize it as, as you know, 17, 16, 17, 18 year right. olds. So just. Well, like, and, you, and even what you learn in school, right? You don't, you don't learn oh, those things. Yeah. Like my son is, um, is also a college student getting his degree in marketing and he's not learning any marketing that would apply to him growing his business. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, he's kind of, um, just dissatisfied, you know, you're putting a lot of investment into mm -hmm. that and now he's halfway in, so he needs to finish up, but you know, that you need to, you can learn those things in different ways that we didn't know were possible when we yep. were going through that. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, that's great. Um, well, next question for me is someone that's, you know, trying to get to that next level, trying to get to where you are. Maybe they're working that full-time job. Maybe they want to either quit or do what you do and, and kind of do both. What does it take to get there? What does it take to actually uh, get started and then be successful at it? So one of the tools that has been especially helpful for me is to have a coach, a mentor. Um, and I know people talk about that a lot and I know people are always looking for a coach. And um, I have found that that requires a investment and a commitment. And um, if you find the right coach uh, that can help you not only scale better, learn faster, and save time because if you're doing a job uh, you know other job you need to save time and you need to do only the things that are going to help you grow your business uh, so that's one really helpful part of having a coach but also um, having a coach can really help you with your mindset um, as you jump into these things that are new to you um, human nature will throw fear, fear your way. And fear can be debilitating, um, it can be paralyzing, and having someone um, kind of coach you through that and help you get past it and take action, to me, that has been invaluable. Um, so I highly recommend that people, you know, find, find coaches and mentors, and then also uh, surround yourself with people that you know have the same the same mindset that you're seeking and the same doing the things that you want to do those are very helpful ways to kind of make things happen for yourself awesome um gonna wrap up with just a few more questions okay what's what's a favorite book uh, that you have read, let's call it recently, maybe within the last uh, year or two? Uh, so one of the books um, that I have read in the last year is um, Miracle Morning by Hal right. Elrod. Um, right. And that, I mean, I don't want to be dramatic, like that changed my life, but it really helped me because it, um, the premise being that you wake up and you you know, kind of have a structure to your morning that sets your day, basically. And if you set your day, you set your week, you set your life. And um, I have put that into practice and do it every single day. And it has, it has changed, um, it has changed my ability, not only to start a day, my day on like a positive mindset, feeling great, but also um, taking time in the morning to really prioritize what you're going to do that day so that I can be focused because that's key with all of the things that I'm juggling. Um, so that, that uh, book is fantastic and I highly recommend it. Yeah, I agree. I do enjoy that book. I, I actually listened to his podcast as well. Uh, enjoy that too. He's got some good stuff on there. Um, Last question before we wrap up is what are your three pillars of wealth creation? So my three pillars, the things that set the foundation for me are first, my why. Um, like I mentioned, I have a big vision, um, literal vision of the future with my family and my business and it's all interconnected. And when things get challenging or I think, yeah, this is too much, I always go back to my why and it just seems like everything is clear from that. Um, so that's the first thing. The second pillar I would say is um, relationships and people. Uh, I have learned that, relation, that um, real estate is a team sport. Um, in every aspect, you need other people um, and be in relationships, whether it be investors for your deal or partners to do a deal or people you're learning from, people you're sharing with. There's in every turn, um, it's all about relationships and people. So I think that would be the second pillar. Um, I guess my third pillar would be education and learning. Um, I'm 
I think there's, oh, no matter how experienced or how long you've been doing this, there's always something to learn from somebody. Uh, so I read a lot of books. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I, I go to a lot of conferences. Learning and educating myself is key to kind of the foundation of where you want to go next. Yeah, I, I, I love those three. I definitely agree with them. As you know, you just said the last one, education and learning, uh, you went to the best ever conference and in Denver last year, which I was at, I didn't meet you there though, I don't think. Um, and you know, that, that actually started your thought process of where you're at right now. So yeah, yeah, just yeah. going to little conferences or, or reading books that can change kind of your trajectory and your mindset, having that coach and mentor too, like you uh, said earlier, that can just really change your your growth, your mindset, and your business uh, in a positive way. So I suggest everybody uh, attending conferences, uh, going to different events like that, different networking events, and uh, reading, and of course, and um, and for sure, I, I agree with you. Having a mentor or a coach uh, really important as well. Yeah, yeah. You never know who you're going to meet and what you're going to learn that might, like you said, change change things forever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that's the other great thing about the, the, uh, you know, conferences or, or different, you know, events, real estate events or whatever is that not only is there good information typically, but there's a lot of great people, uh, that yeah. are in all different aspects of their investing career. It might be some, some people that are just starting, but then there's also people that, you know, at Joe's event that you talked about, there's people that have thousands of units uh, there. There was people that are in totally different niches in real estate. Um, and so there's just a lot of great people at these events that uh, you can attend. Absolutely. So Stephanie, uh, last thing is how can our listeners get in touch with you? Uh, so my website is newheightsinvestmentgroup.com. And I am also launching a podcast in February called Frenzied to Financial Freedom. Um, it's focused on women who are in, have corporate jobs or day jobs that are looking to have side hustles or start new businesses or invest in real estate to kind of start a path of financial freedom. So that's um, Frenzied to Freedom on Facebook. And looking forward to launching that in February. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we'll look forward to that as well. We'll put that on the show notes so our listeners can find that podcast and uh, connect with you as well. Great. Thank you. Yeah, Stephanie, I appreciate you being on the show and you have a fantastic rest of the day. You also. Hey, special thanks to Stephanie Wonkel for joining us on the show. Appreciate her spending time of her day and give us a ton of value. Uh, a few things I took from this episode along with uh, definitely many more. Uh, first of all, she talks about getting out in the community and just getting known, making sure that people know what you're doing. Uh, people know that you're uh, knowledgeable and are an expert in uh, your industry and just getting out there, building those relationships will be the next one is make sure you're building the relationships, you're talking with people. Uh, again, you're getting out there and becoming known. And the last thing is education and learning. Make sure you're always learning. Make sure you're always improving uh, not only what you know in the industry, but improving yourself as well. So uh, tons of good value. Appreciate her joining us on the show. Uh, that is it. I'm Todd Dexhammer. I'm signing out. Make every day a Saturday. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. A couple things before we go again. Go on to our Facebook page, Pillars of Wealth. We'd love to have you on there. Go on to iTunes, give us a rating and review, and subscribe to the show. Also, um, you know, don't forget, reach out to me if you want any help with uh, potentially growing your business, and reach out to John Styles to help you buy or sell real estate. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Have a fantastic the rest of the day. And as I say, make every day a Saturday. <laughs>